Here's a second example. Summation n goes from two to infinity of one over square root of n minus one. Hmm, what's this similar to? And why am I starting at two instead of one? Well, like with the ln example, I don't want to divide by zero. If n were one here, I'd have square root of one minus one is zero. I, I want to avoid dividing by zero. This is similar to a P series with P equal to, well, one half, which is less than one, which diverges. Should I write N goes from one to infinity here or two to infinity? It really doesn't matter much. I'll write two to infinity just to relate it more clearly to this series in question. We know this diverges though. So we suspect this is gonna diverge as well. And it does, what is a proof of divergence? Once again, do the same structure, define A and B in, but be careful. The way our comparison test in the book is set up, when you're trying to prove the series in question diverges, it should really be the B ends instead of the A ends. Let B and be the terms of the series in question and A and B the series that you know about over here. It's not that you couldn't switch the labeling around. It's just to be consistent with the way our book's comparison test is stated. That's the best thing to do. To have the form of the inequality go in alphabetical order, so to speak. That's what we're after. We're interested in knowing the sum of the Bn's diverges by using the fact that the sum of the An's diverges. The An's are smaller things, hopefully. If the sum of smaller numbers diverges, then the smaller sum of bigger numbers should also diverge. That's the intuition of the comparison test. And yes, it is true. Then these things are non-negative and An is less than or equal to Bn. Why? Because the denominator of the an, the bottom of the fraction, is bigger than it is for the bn, making the whole fraction smaller. Dealing with positive numbers, when you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller number. This is true for all n greater than or equal to two. We know, now this time, the sum of the ans from two to infinity, which is the sum of one over n to the one half diverges. That's a P series with P equal to a half, which is less than or equal to one. Therefore, the sum we're interested in now, which is the sum of the BNs, one over square root of n minus one also diverges by the comparison test. I'm really trying to help you see the structure of how you make arguments using theorems in writing out these proofs. You have to verify that the hypotheses of the theorem are satisfied in the given situation. And once you know they're satisfied, then you know the conclusion is true. Because it's a theorem. Theorems are true statements True if then statements, if the hypothesis after the if is true, then the conclusion after the then will also be true. But to emphasize what I was emphasizing, our comparison test, test is stated like this, in both bullet points, which are both true, the ANs are less than or equal to the BNs. They're going in alphabetical order here. So the first bullet is for proving convergence of the ANs when you know convergence of the BNs, the series, not the terms. I should have said series. And the second one's about proving this, the divergence of the series for the BNs when you know the series for the ANs divergence. Book summations don't write n goes from one to infinity. That's, it's assumed n goes from some finite number to infinity. 